Good morning and welcome to worship on this third weekend of Easter here at Lakeview Lutheran Church. However you are accessing this video, we are grateful that you're present and a part of our, of our time together today. We look forward to the day when we can all gather back in the sanctuary um, as one community and celebrate the word and the sacrament. Um, a thank you to everybody this week who has who assisted with the blood drive. We are most grateful and had a large amount of people um, uh, attend and donate blood, and the Red Cross is very grateful of that too because of the low blood supply in our country. I would just want to encourage you to continue your social distancing, continue to wear those masks, wash your hands frequently. Um, it looks like we're having a major impact on that curve, and that's exactly what we want to happen. So thank you for doing that, and thank you again for your support of Lakeview Lutheran Church. I invite you now to silence your dogs, your cats, your neighbors, the cars on your street, and your electronics as we prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prelude. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. May your Holy Spirit work within us so that when we see you on the road, we may know who it is. Open our eyes to look in the surprising places where you may show up unexpectedly and keep us safe on our journeys, both physical and spiritual. In your holy name we pray, amen. I invite Chris Kirst forward to sing Brother James' air, which more familiar is known as the 23rd Psalm. Thank you. 
gospel reading for this third weekend of Easter comes from the 24th chapter of St. Luke. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus. It was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Then he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and before all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah would suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took some bread, blessed and broke it, and then he vanished from their sight. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed. And he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. What happens when you meet a stranger on the road? I tend to be a little skeptical. I'm not too quick to engage to, with a stranger. And I'm even less and if I'm in an even less familiar city like New York or, or New Orleans or Chicago, I am terribly reluctant to speak. Like many of the rest of you, I make that decision usually based on safety. We've all had that unpleasant or even fearful experience because we spoke to someone who approached us on the street. And that's hard. It's hard because we're called to love our neighbors, to love our enemies, to pray for those who persecute us, and to take care of the creation, all of the creation, including those strangers we encounter on the street. So today, like often, Jesus throws a monkey wrench into all of those things in our heads and in our world. Today we learn that because two of his disciples embraced a stranger on their walk to Emmaus, they encountered the risen Christ. These disciples that day, that evening, invited the stranger to walk with them and then to share a meal with them because night had fallen. By doing that, they encountered their friend, Jesus, their friend who had been raised earlier that morning. As a result, 
the disciples moved from despair to hope. In their grief and their fear and their frustration and their anger, they were able to find some joy and optimism for a new day and for a new life. These disciples persevered, and they saw Jesus alive and risen. It's amazing to me how our ancient Bible stories are applicable to our life in our time and in our place. That's why we call the Bible, um, we refer to the Bible as being alive and speaking to us in all situations. That gospel story about the disciples meeting Jesus on the road to Emmaus, we read that every year. But maybe this year it has never spoken to us this way as it as in the past. Maybe it speaks to us in entirely new terms. The disciples on the road that day were focused on death. They were so focused on death, of the death of their friend, that they couldn't see his living. They couldn't get over their grief to be able to move from death to life. So let's be those disciples. In our world, we certainly have to be careful about approaching strangers on the street. Life is a little different today in the 21st century than it was back in the 1st century. But we can still use those disciples in that story today as our guides. Right now, we are so focused on death and isolation and the lack of exposure to others. We are frustrated and we're miserable because our homes are getting way too small. We want to go shopping and we want to go to the movies and we want to see a baseball game and we want to graduate from high school. Some of us even would be happy going for a walk at Devil's Lake State Park. And of course, we want to see our families. And then, many of us are cleaning regularly. My house has never been so clean. And we do that because we need something to do. And because we're frustrated then, we get frustrated then because we've piled all this stuff up that we now would like to donate to St. Vinny's or Goodwill, but we can't take it there because everything's closed. Like the disciples on the road that day, our focus has been on death and despair. So I want to invite you right now to open your eyes. When we took youth on Youth Works mission trips around the country in Puerto Rico and many places, Canada, every evening on those trips, the entire group, about 80 folks, kids mostly, would gather for devotions. And every evening of the week, those devotions started in the very same way. We were all asked to voluntarily share how we saw Jesus during our day. Oh yeah, some of the answers got a little crazy. Never from Lakeview kids, of course. But most answers were filled with hope and with enlightenment. Even in the midst of some very difficult and some very impoverished situations where we had been working. So I'd like to take that question from YouthWorks and pose it to you right now. Where have you seen Jesus? This pandemic and the safety guidelines suck. But as you participate in this worship experience today, either by Facebook or Vimeo or YouTube or via your email accounts, I want you to think about at least one way that you saw Jesus yesterday. How were you, your eyes opened yesterday? Opened, like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, to see a risen Christ. And I want you to respond. Yeah, there's some homework here this week. If you are accessing this service on Facebook, I want you to go below a little later on and post a response about how you saw Jesus. Let's take some time and share our hope filled experiences with each other. Let's help each other remember today that it is all not about despair. There is much hope and there is much encouragement out there. Let's remember life. Let's remember that Jesus is walking with us right now 
in many unusual and in many out of the ordinary ways. Post your experiences on Facebook or email your experiences for, to me and I'll share them on your behalf. So I'll begin today by sharing. I'll share some hope-filled sunshine because it's beautiful outside as we record this right now. While the total number of people who have had COVID-19 in our country is the highest in the world, and the number does continue to go up, and while the number of deaths in the United States is staggering, look at this data. And I'll admit that this data will have changed by the time you hear this sermon. But in the state of New York, the worst hit spot in our nation, on April 3rd, 363 people entered ICU beds in that state. On April 8th, that number had dropped to 140. And I continue to watch Governor Andrew Cuomo every day, and that number continues to drop daily. Over in Vermont, an elementary school teacher was exposed with the, to the virus, and the custodial staff was called in to completely clean and disinfect the building where he had been. Now, a mother of, of the students wanted to do something to recognize those custodians who had to come in and clean, and so she started a fundraiser. She had a goal of raising $200, but that didn't happen, because instead, $7,500 is what was raised, and each one of those eight custodians received nearly $1,000 as an appreciation gift. I'm seeing Jesus in the doctors, and the nurses, and the healthcare workers, and the emergency services personnel, and in every American who is diligently adhering to the COVID-19 guidelines to help lower that curve. Now it's your turn. Post away. Email as frequently as you wish. How have your eyes been open to see Jesus? Amen. As we sing the hymn, the Easter day with joy was bright, the words will appear on your screen. our faith today using the traditional words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. For your church, we thank you, even as we find new and uncommon ways of being your church. Give the church wisdom to make good decisions for the safety and well-being of all in our congregations and in our communities. As we celebrated Earth Day, we are reminded how important the care of your creation is. The universe is a beautiful and amazing gift to have. Open our eyes and hearts to preserve and protect it. Be with all those who have recently been the victims of storms and flooding. We give thanks for all farmers who will tend the land and grow the crops. Keep them safe and guide us to share our food resources with those who are in need. We lift to you all those who drive truck and carry that food to stores. Protect all people working in the grocery industry. We lift to you all health care workers. Thank you for the gift of medicine and science and for our opportunity to use those gifts to preserve life and health. Give us the wisdom to stay at home, to keep those frontline workers safe, and to not overwhelm our hospitals. As we are anxious about economics, Give us knowledge to make decisions that continue to protect and prevent. Give courage and resources to those who are struggling financially or without employment. In the midst of this difficult pandemic, open our eyes to be able to see you in the odd and in the unusual, and keep our minds focused on the hope of the resurrection. We pray for all who grieve today. We pray for all who struggle with emotional and physical health, including Georgia and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The hymn is This Joyful Easter Tide. The words will appear on your screen.
one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn, We Are Baptized in Christ Jesus, and the words will appear on your screen.